Welcome back to the Meaningful People Podcast. I am Yaakov Langer. And I am Achim Gorni. Yeah, yeah it, my voice did sound a little strange No, there. it was good, it was good. But um, talking about voices, that's something that our next guest... Is it a weird segue? I'm, I'm so interested to see where this goes. No, and Levi is unfortunately blind, and uh, much of his life is surrounded by the voices around him, his voice, and mm, it, it, it's interesting. It's our first podcast with someone who, who was unable to see um, Nabuch, but I, I think, like, w- I remember when podcasts came out thinking, like, this is such a great medium. Obviously, certain people will be watching YouTube, but podcasts itself are such a great medium for, for people who can't see and so whether they completely can't see or even a little can't see, you know? Right. Because it's not visual at all. No, it's it's a really audio experience. Right. No, 100%. And Levy Greenspan is somebody who is way more than his disability. Uh, he, he, he lives life day to day that doesn't let, he doesn't let him, doesn't let that hold him back too much. Uh, he's somebody who has accomplished a lot in his life and he continues to do so each and every day. I think you'll hear that through this episode. Um, he was not born blind. Uh, nope. so there was quite a journey there. It's a journey. And, and you should know when we started this, we had a list of like top five, top 10 people Levi was for like we not nah, he had a few people he wanted I had a few people I wanted Levi for me I I as you'll hear in the episode I, I know Levi from a little way back he was like I'm like boom meaningful person Levi Levi so um, we present to you Levi Greenspan enjoy welcome to the meaningful people podcast the podcast where we talk to people who are meaningful yeah that sounds good. We are sitting here with Levi Greenspan all the way from, what is it, the 917, 347? What's the Queens area code? 718. 718? Okay. Yeah, I thought was, that's also Brooklyn now. I sound un- yeah. uneducated. The 718, we appreciate you coming in, Levi. Thank you very much. So, Levi, we want, we want to hear your story from the beginning. So, in, um, in September of 1995, yeah. I started law school in Manhattan. I started Fordham Law School, and I used to live up in Washington Heights to be near base measures so I can learn Torah. Around October, November, I'm just trying to recall everything, I got off this, I was wanting, every time I got off the subway, I always ran towards the water fountain because I was always thirsty. So I, I thought maybe I had diabetes because a sign of diabetes, you're always thirsty. So in January of 1995, I went to my doctor, Dr. Schoenfeld Zal, he unfortunately was nifted this year. And he checked me out. He goes, Levi, you don't have diabetes, but come back to me a month from now. So I figured if he said come back to him a no- month from now, no need to go back to him at all. It's not an emergency. If it be an emergency, you would say come back tomorrow. So from January, January to May, I was waking up a lot, getting very hyper, going to the bathroom. So I thought it had to be one of two problems, either a psychological issue or I just hate law school. <laughs> <laughs> so I signed up for a social work school for that a summer program and I started to go see a psychologist you know they say mothers know best around May time my mother goes to me Levi you should go back to Dr. Schoenfeld for a checkup for a visit so I had this big fat bloated face I'm not Alex Rodriguez I don't take steroids <laughs> like so Dr. Schoenfeld took one look at me and he goes Levi you have what's called Cushing's disease you have a benign tumor um, there's there's two pituitary glands in your body. There's one in the brain and one thing near the liver and kidney, and they control your sugar. So when you have a tumor pressing down on it, that means you're gonna have more sugar than you need. <laughs> and that's why I was thirsty a lot, and that's why my face was bloated because of all the liquids I was drinking. So he sent me to Mount <coughs> to, to Mount Sinai Hospital to an incredible Dr. Alice Levine. She's incredible. And she, she ordered an MRI and a CAT scan to be taken to find the exact location of the tumor. They found it right below the brain. They told me my tumor was large. Again, I can't tell you what that means, but I needed nine and a half hour open head surgery and a six hour operation through the nose. I thank Kaddish Baruch the tumor, that Baruch Hashem, first of all, the tumor was benign. And I also thank Hashem that, you know, they got most of it out. And I also thank Hashem that the operations were successful. About two weeks later, I had a checkup with one of my surgeons. And a day or two before, I noticed I had a lot of mucus in my nose. <coughs> so when I showed up, I go, doctor, is it normal I should have such mucus in my nose after having such operations? The doctor said to me, Levi, that's not mucus. You're leaking f- fluid from your head. You have what's called a CSF leak. You're now going to require another four-hour operation through the nose to close up that leak. 
So when I woke up from that operation, I go, doctor, I think I have news you don't want to hear. I really believe that I'm still leaking. I think that I'm still leaking. He told, he told me there's no way you're leaking. You underwent a four-hour operation through the nose. You see, you're just imagining. You see, all it is is dry blood. When he took the cotton out of my nose, it wasn't dry blood. I was still leaking. I then need another four to six hour open head surgery to close up that leak. So during that summer of 1995, I had total four operations. And after the fourth, they told me my vision would not be 20-20 because they told me in order to get to the benign tumor, they had to knock the optic nerve out of its place. But <coughs> they said the vision would come back. I forgot whether it's October, November, December, but Baruch Hashem, Hashem due to His great kindness, Hashem returned my vision to me. On February or March of 1996... Well, hold on. I'm just going to interrupt. What was that like for you when you were able to, I guess, see again at that point? I don't fully recall. But don't forget, I still had vision. It wasn't totally clear. Right, but right. I, okay. I did go to like after that, after the fourth, I went to an ophthalmologist who gave me glasses, but the vision was improving every day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Around February or March of 1996, I, told, I noticed every time I ate, food would come out of my mouth. So I went to a doctor bookbinder, Mount Sinai Hospital, and he told me, due to all the operation scar tissue wrapped around my jaw, and that's why I couldn't open my, my mouth fully, and that's why food's falling out. He told me I need another now and a half surgery in and out the same day. After that, I went and underwent radiation treatments. Baruch Hashem, Hashem had tremendous kindness to me. I had no hair, no hair loss and no nausea. And that, the radiation was about once a week over a five-week period. <clears throat> when the radiation was completed and the, and the operation was finished, I'm just guessing, I must have told myself, hopefully this is it. No more operations, no more major medical procedures, no more radiation. In August of 1997, a good friend of mine, Jonathan Kaplan, was getting married in St. Louis, Missouri, and he invited me to his wedding. And I was staying at someone's house, and you know, they said, they said, me, Casa, Sue, Casa, our house is your house, do whatever you want. So I was, I was back in their car up into the garage, and I either hit the garage wall or the door. I don't, or the, wall, the wall or the door of the garage, I don't fully recall. Of course, I offered to pay for the damage because, you know, a Jew has to pay for the damages. <laughs> and they said, Levi, we forgive you. <coughs> I live in Queens, in New York, as Nachi said. <laughs> and my sister and brother-in-law were coming back from Eretz Yisrael from a wedding. And my father goes to me, Levi, I'll drive my car to there, but then you drive theirs. So I was on the Van Wyck Highway when I cut a guy off. I went right in front of him. But the only problem was I didn't see him. So I knew at that moment in time, there's something wrong with my vision. So I went to one eye doctor who sent me to another, who said, no problem, you come once or twice a week and you do exercise on the computer in my office and you'll see your vision will improve. So I did exactly like it said, you know, go to his office and do the exercise on the computer. But the vision was getting worse, was not, increase, not improving. Every day I was seeing less and less. So I got in contact with the Dr. Joe Mindell. He's a new ophthalmologist at Mount Sinai Hospital. And I see we're talking Mount Sinai in Manhattan. And Dr. Mindell told me, by the time I went to see him, I could no longer see out of one of my eyes. He said, Levi, I can't get back the vision you lost, <coughs> nor can I guarantee you're gonna, be, you're gonna be able to see in your other eye. You might go 100%, 100 totally blind in both eyes. I tell you, HaKadosh Baruch who blessed me with an incredible loving family, and my great family did some homework and they found out about Dr. Scott Foreman at Westchester County Medical Center. Dr. Foreman has a technique called the hyperbaric chamber. What that is, that's a glass tube. You, you line it for two hours at a time, and for two, sorry, you line it for two hours at a time, two hours at a time, twice a piece, twice a day. And he said, through this undergoing this oxygen procedure in the hyperbaric chamber, he can keep the ice that they have. He can't get back what I lost, but, but he can get the eyesight I have, keep it. But every time you enter or leave the hyperbaric chamber, a nurse takes your temperature. So one time I was leaving and the nurse said, you know, you have 103. Is anyone in your house? Can I contact anyone? So I don't recall what I said to her. I'm going to be honest with you, but I must have told him, listen, I'm an adult. You have any Tylenol, some Advil? I can take care of myself. I tell you, looking back, I thank Hashem that she didn't listen to me. She put me on the side for observation. She watched me and monitored me. My temperature went up to 105 and I went unconscious. I had meningitis. I was unconscious about for two and a half days. I think I woke up when I was Simchas Torah, but as you know, when you wake up, you don't really remember much. Hmm. 
A couple of days later, I was put back in an ambulance towards Mount Sinai Hospital, where I then had to undergo another six hour open head surgery. And after that, I returned to Dr. Foreman and he said to me, there's nothing we can do. Since the oxygen, oxygen, oxygen treatments were interrupted, it's not gonna help you anymore. And I went blind around Hanukkah of 1997 when I was 26 years old. And since then, you, you were never able to see? No, never. I, I, what I see is colors. Hmm. Like right now, I'm seeing, I can't even, white, green, I can't make it out, but I see colors. Hmm. I'm seeing green and white, I think, right now, yeah. Interesting. I see blue, I see red, I see different colors. All my imagination. <laughs> the, red is, the red is my hair. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not seeing red right now, you know what I'm saying? But, <laughs> but I'm just saying, it's all my imagination. Do you, do you, do you, rec I mean, since you've been blind since 1997, do you recall how your family looks, how you yourself look? So I tell you, I have no idea how I look. I know I'm good looking. Yeah, I just yeah, don't know yeah, how yeah, I look. Very sure. handsome, very that's handsome. Sure. Thank you. Um, but I don't know how I look, but I, I'm slowly forgetting even my family. You have to realize being blind for 23 years, if I got correctly, yeah, it's a long time. You know, you forget after I, but I know like example, I know what colors are. I know what a slice of pizza is. Mm. I know, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. I know what a bus looks like. You know, like I told some, if I got to see tonight, I wouldn't be shocked at how people looked. Right. I might be shocked how they look because I have images, but I won't be shocked what a human being looks like because I used to be able to see. So do you, do you remember the l last thing you saw? I think it was a don't walk sign in Manhattan when I was leaving my leaving law school to go to Mincha Mav in a shul. I think that's the last thing I saw, if I remember correctly. So after... <clears throat> but I have to realize when I was blind, and was going blind, I could barely see anymore. Like the vision was getting worse and right. worse. I, losing the vision was getting worse and worse every day. So after you, you, I guess, completely became blind, you still went on to pass the bar, become a lawyer, yeah. and you did that all blind. Is that correct? Yes. Was that difficult for you? So for the bar, I locked myself in my house for seven weeks straight just studying. The only thing I went to was Minion, of course. Now, of course, I kept Shabbos. But um, the, the course that prepares you for the bar is called Barbary. <clears throat> they were sued a couple years back by blind people, so they put everything on audio. And I live in an incredible, loving Jewish community called Hillcrest Queens. We called two people, one of them was, one of the person wants to be anonymous, but the other one was Robertson Esther Krauss. Not blame her, not blame her, Esther, she wouldn't mind me saying her name, so. Yeah, yeah sure. Bishwabi also wants to be anonymous, but anyway, she, she got us, they got us 30 lawyers from our neighborhood to come over one per night to help me study. Really? And I like, and then Baruch Hashem, do the tremendous chesed from Hashem, I passed the New York State Bar on the first try. Wow. wow. How'd that feel? Because because people who could see uh, very often fail the bar exam, and I you who couldn't. I, I, be, I, be honest, I don't remember. You have to realize I don't take notes. <laughs> I'll take notes on all this. That's I true. can tell you what helped me continue is four reasons. First is Hashem. Mm. I see He's holding me in His hand. I see miracles in my life. I'll tell you the story. Last January, my parents went to Israel before I did, so I was home alone during the day. I had some guys come over at night, but during the day I was home alone and I wanted a sucking candy. I know we have a, can a jar of sucking candies on my dining room table. So I went to the dining room table to get the, the sucking candy, but the jar was not on the dining room table. I went all around the dining room table checking the bags and, and nothing was there. I sat on the couch wondering where could it be. In my head, I'm not lying to you, I saw a hand pointing to the left. And I go, it can't be to the left of the couch, it's never there. The hand wouldn't stop. I picked myself up and went to the left of the couch. It was in a bag right to the left of the couch. Wow. I, I, no. I, tell, I tell everyone, Hashem is with everyone. If you look in your life, you'll see miracles. I, I'll tell you another story. I joke around how I became a New Yorker. Me and two friends, were gonna, it was when Tony Sessel was on Thursday night. We gonna, Thursday, we were going to collect money Thursday night for poor people. I was in Kew Garden Hills, and three people came up to us and put a gun, mugged us. So me, being that I'm blind, I didn't realize there's a gun by my head, and I felt a hand go in my pocket. And I was fighting with the guy because I thought it was a friend of mine playing a joke. <laughs> Later that night, they got caught by the police. And it came out, they killed, unfortunately, a Pakistani woman three days before us. Wow. And I wondered why they killed me because I was doing the exact same thing she was. Because Hashem said, you're not touching my child's life. You can take his money, but not his life. But I tell you, if you look in your life, you see Hashem's with you. Like David Malik said, Hashem leave the law you are. Hashem's with everybody. The second I may continue is my Rebbe by Yehuda Parnas. My father calls him an angel. My mother calls him a tati. He, he's just, he was just, he's just incredible. We, I remember when I was in the intensive care unit before my first operation at 9.30 in the morning, you can't get a visitor. Well, partners came in and bent by my bed and he goes, Levi, I told the nurse I'm your rabbi. And she said, I can have one minute. 
I tell you one thing, I'm there for you. And he's really been there for me. The third item is Klai Yisrael. I, I tell you, they go to any hospital, you see Jewish people have tons of visitors. But, but, but even outside that, our people tell you, like Shimon Lefkowitz from Brooklyn. He just, he, he just took me to Princeton, New Jersey to take me to Tzaddik. Shimon Lefkowitz makes his house feel like my house. Like, you know what and I'm saying? his son Sfiel is the one who brought yeah. you here. For the, Shimon Lefkowitz is incredible. <laughs> Judah Goldschmidt and Yushalayim. Again, he gives me, again, he gives me his apartment when I go to Israel. Even so, I mean, he's living there, but I'm saying one time he went to America, Levi, you can stay at our house. This other guy, I was sus now in Florida. I'm just, I'm just giving, you know, people, there's nothing like Klai You what? know, before the corona, eight married guys, I didn't even know who half of them were, took upon themselves to get me to Marv every night. And they didn't get paid for it. And the last thing that made me continue is Torah. Through Torah, I realized everything Hashem does is gamzal the Torah. It's for my best, even though I don't understand it. I miss Torah a lot. I tell everyone, if Hashem had made me blind to teach me the importance of learning Torah, I understand, I miss it a lot. Yes, I learned it with the Chavus, I can learn it, but it's not the same thing as looking yourself into the Gemara, the Mishnah or the Chumash, or the Mesir of Sisham, you know? There's nothing like looking into it. If you could see one thing, what would you want to see? See, that's very hard, because I would like to see a Sefer, see my parents, obviously my Rebbe, why you'd upon us, mm. Shlita, so I, I can't tell you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. We'll be right back to that episode with Levi, but first, we have something to say about AMR. So... I, I, I went on Twitter before, and um, if you want to follow me, Jack Langer. But um, I said this on Twitter. I said, and I think it's a great call. Um, now nah, you'll tell me if you agree. During the winter, I'm always wearing sweatshirts. And during, no, sorry, I messed it up. During the summer, I'm always wearing sweatshirts. And during the winter, I'm always wearing like t-shirts and polo shirts. So I saw your call. I saw that call. Um, Do you agree with that call? I, I hear it. I don't agree with it. I think that, um, especially when yesterday was a, was a day that was 100 degrees, I can't okay. imagine wearing okay. a sweatshirt. Not, not on those days. but uh, uh, So you mean not on a summer day? Not on a heat wave. It's a heat wave. Okay, but even 85 degrees. You're wearing a sweatshirt because inside it's a little cold? Hold on. And let me ask you right now. We're indoors. It's, actually, it's the summer right now. Are you not freezing right now? I'm good. I'm gooch. Here, watch. Feel. Your hands are freezing. I'm freezing. I think you need to eat. Like, I need to wear a sweatshirt. That's you, what I need. You need like a burger or something but, to like know, get some but warm blood. The point is that when you wear a sweatshirt during the summer, winter, whatever you, if you're normal, you do it in winter. And if you're like me, you do it during the summer. But it's to regulate yourself, to get back to normal. You know what also regulates yourself? Drugs. The good type of drugs, not the bad drugs. The good drugs from a pharmaceutical like no other, the one, the only... We just got banned from every single base Yaakov and Yeshiva. Nah, you know how many people <laughs> listen to that and they're like, oh my gosh, we need these guys to host our event. By the way, we, we host events now. That's a thing. Right. And we promote drugs. The good type. Yeah. So, so give AMR a call at 848-222-1110 because they're going to provide for you the good drugs. Or you can visit amrfarmrx.com where you can get the good drugs. Coin turn by Yaakov Langer. <laughs> we hope you enjoy the rest of this episode. Enjoy. How, how do you, how, you seem so up so upbeat and, and like content with your situation, which is incredible. You know, I guess how, how do you, what do you attribute that to? So I tell you, um, I don't remember the exact story. I, I can tell you one story that a Pesach phone, uh, uh, one of his stories that a Pesach phone said helped me a lot. There was a shooting in Kent University in 1970. I think that's in Kansas City or Kansas. I do not know what Kent is. But a, 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 yid, a yid, a Jewish guy was shot and, it, and it was, he became paralyzed from his neck down. The father was, you know, scared to visit his son. So the father told him, well, Shiva, I give you a lot of money. I want you to go visit him. So well, Shiva went inside to the hospital and saw the guy smiling. And he goes, so how could you smile? You're paralyzed from your neck down. He goes, yes, I, in the beginning I was depressed. But every day now I see a guy across the hall, he orders ice cream. They give him a bucket of ice cream and then he finishes and put the bucket over his head to look the inside. I think Hashem will not like him. <laughs> what I tell everyone is that you have to look what you do have. Yes, I face my challenges and I've had my challenges. I'm sure as Yaakov Langer will know this and his brothers, Eli and, and Yitzhi you know, and his father called David. But th th I face my challenges. But you have to look what you do have. There's nothing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, yes, I, 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 I can walk, I can talk. Yes, I can't see, but I have fingers, I have clothing. You know what I'm saying? I have a bed at night. I have a house to sleep in. Like I, I tell everyone is that, and I'm sure you agree, Nachi, fame and money does not give you happiness. Right. You have to have, feel like you have a purpose in life, a meaning in life. And you have to thank Hashem for all what you have. Right. Man, many, many people are, you know, 
many people who are blind. I don't know the statistics, but a lot of people are, are born blind. But you, you, you had your eyesight for what, 20 some years? It was 26. 26 years, you know, and do you, do you feel like robbed in, in any way? Do you feel like you got slighted? No. Do you have questions on Hashem maybe? No. Maybe in my 20 something years, maybe 10 to 15 times I got angry at him. He's my father. How can I get my own father? How can I get in my own father? He loves me dearly. He loves every Jew dearly, but I'm saying he loves me dearly. So how can I get angry at my own father? I mean, there are people who, you know, get angry when they're sitting in traffic, but you know, you lost your eyesight and you're, you're just I, happy. I agree, but he's my father. Let me, let me ask a question, Achi. Uh, l- 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 um, two things that we don't see the full story. If we knew the whole story, then we no one would doubt Hashem. But let me ask you a question. Well, uh, 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 you have any children? Yeah. How old are they? Nine Three? months old. One okay. baby. But let's say he's three years old. When he's three years old. She, she, she. When she's three years old. When she's three, three years old and she's playing on the grass and she's going to run into the street and a car's coming down. You're going to push her to the floor, right? Right. It, but isn't that cruel? Yeah, but it's going to save her. Yeah, so same thing. Hashem knows this is what's going to save me right now. Hopefully tonight I'll get to see again. But right now Hashem is saying, Lavi, right now you have to be blind. It's for your best. Do you? Do you and I, well, I can tell you one thing. And sure. When Mashiach comes, and we all agree that we need Mashiach speedily, Amen, but yeah. I'll be dancing and singing in front of Hashem. Thank you for what they've done for me. Do you, and that, <coughs> that's really, that's incredible. And that's a really <coughs> important lesson. Do you, you said, you know, Amir Hashem, Yaakov is going to drive you home tonight. Yeah. You'll see, you know, You'll see, no, you'll, see, you'll, see a, you'll see a stop sign. Do you, do you hold on to that that hope that you'll see tomorrow? I do hold up. Yeah, you can't give up hope. A Jew can never give up hope. I'm Yaish. I, I, I don't I'll give up hope, yes. I have hope that one day I'll be seeing again all that and I'll hopefully be married and all that because of. We're mm-hmm. going to talk about your, your shidduch resume. Yes. But let me ask you, do, do you, uh, not nah, do you, I'm sure there are times you get down. Can I tell you some funny stories? Or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. So I was once in, Cre- I live in Queens. So I was one walking down Main Street. Main Street is where a lot of the kosher stores are. And I bumped into somebody and the guy goes, what are you, blind? I go, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was probably time, very awkward for him. <laughs> and I was one time Yeshiva, yeshiva Ochaim. I sometimes down by Yeshiva Ochaim in Queens. <laughs> so I, I was using my cane to go to the corner because my father goes to early. I mean, he likes going to 6.30. And I go to the corner and make a left because I move in a little bit on the block. So, you know, because I'm sure you know as drivers, for another car to block the corner is a little harder than for cars to come around and turn down on that block. So I hit someone with my cane and I was apologizing, but the person wasn't responding. I was apologizing to a garbage can. <laughs> <laughs> For how? He's so how nice. Long? He even apologizes <laughs> to Hashem's garbage yeah. cans. Yeah. So, can, yeah, well, wait, can I tell you, you one more funny you story? Go for it. <laughs> so, I, I, as Yaakov Lenga tell you, I, I love Bo Park. You do. I just, I just love Jews. I love Yidden. I'm addicted to Yidden. I love Yidden. But anyway, I was in Bo Park in a place called Mostly Music. You know, they sell Avon Freed, Yaakov Shrek, he's Mordechai Medavids, you know, all of them. So I once thought a little Hasish boy came in, so I saw it tapping on his head. Don't ask me why I did it, but I did it. <laughs> he left the store, so I go to the salesman, where'd he go? He goes, Levi, you were hitting a 93-year-old woman on the head. She did not like getting hit on her head. <laughs> well, what made you think a little Hasidish boy would like it? I don't know, but you know, it's a little boy. A little <laughs> you're, you're, it's something I want to bring up. You're a, uh, a sperm store addict. Yeah, but I don't buy so much farm as I used to. Really? You slow down? Yeah, I slow down. I, but but I, you used to you used to go to farm store. Well, like, what's shot? Like, you used to go in. Because like, I told you, they, like I told Nachi, I miss Taiwa a lot. Mm. I would love to look at these farm inside. I'm thinking inside, not there, to discover. Are there are there uh, are there farm that have braille and <laughs> and you're able to? There are farm that have braille, but I unfortunately don't know braille. I I don't forget. I became blind when I was 26. Right. And the teacher and I had a falling out. Unfortunately. But hold on, that, that's a good point. I know you. A you don't use a walking stick or. No, I do use a walking stick. You do? Yeah. I never see you. I mean, you're always with someone, so that's why. No, but I use a walking stick. Like I, I use it in ballpark. I can't use it in a five towns because I'll be end up walking into Lindbrook. I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> that's you true. Know? Okay, fine. But but you don't have a guard dog and bra- like why why wouldn't you at this point learn braille? No, be- be- because I, there's a guy Nachum Lehman. He's a big sadik. He lives in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. He told me that yes, we can teach a braille, but it's gonna take a whole year. So let's do it. I agree, but but you're talking a huge amount, and and I. But do then, a, but Levi, how many? Think of how many things you could. Okay, it's not the I, same. Okay, as, but, but let me tell you. But let me tell you. I have talking computer, a problem called Jaws, J E W S, talk as a computer speaking to you, and da, everything. A lot more da, is audio today. Tremendous right, audio. Right. Right. Yeah, but hello. If you knew Braille, then Shabbos all of a sudden. I agree. 
But let me ask you a question. Yeah. Why do drive by ATM machines have Braille on it? <laughs> Imagine me driving up to one. You'll be running for your life. <laughs> it's one of the things. And if I you're guess. talking about a guard dog, I am petrified of dogs. Oh, Petrif- yeah? I was one time walking with my friend and a dog jumped on his fence on, on the on the dog jumped on the fence. I ran him on the street. If I'm getting killed, I'm getting killed by a car, not by a dog. And Nachi pushed you on the ground there. Um, <laughs> no. So, Livy, let me ask you. You're, you clearly have your struggles. There's got to be days that, you, that you're sad, you're down, you're, you're depressed. How, how do you get out of that funk? Well, sometimes I'll just call my friend. Um, Which friend? Different friends different, all the time. Okay. I don't have particular friend, you know. Whether it's I was Saz, you saw Hachberg, different guys all the time. You know what I'm saying? It all depends who's, who's available. You right, know what right. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So you call a friend, or uh, they'll cheer me up, or I just sometimes just have to live with it. You know, after a while, it goes away. You know, but I'm telling you, you have to look what you have. Can, can I ask you a question? Me or Nachi or both? Both. Okay, sure. sure. Do you think actors are happy in life? Well, I think we hear a lot that you know. A lot of them aren't. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm trying to tell you, you got to appreciate what you do have, not what you don't have. Mm. If you don't appreciate what you do have, you're never going to be happy in life. Do you, do you like consider yourself like an extremely happy person? Mm, not extremely. I'm happy. And I'm not extremely happy. You know, you're happy. L- Levy, what a, be, being blind, obviously, you, you can't see, but different. Yeah, that's what blind means. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you, Jakob Langer. <laughs> uh, I'm going to start a dictionary soon. So, but, but you do have heightened senses. For example, I, I know that your memory is, is incredible. Yes. I know about 150 numbers. You're, if, 100, if you have 150 phone number, your number is 917. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to blur that out. You don't need everyone to <laughs> blur that so out. Please call him. He has no oh, friend. Oh gosh. No, we're definitely, it's really, uh, please But all my senses, I'll tell you, I'll tell you two stories. I, a couple of years ago, I came home from Minion. And my father went to work and my brother and sister happily married. And about 8.30 in the morning, I go to my mom, I smell smoke. My mother goes, ah, it's probably next to neighbor I had a barbecue last night. Two hours later, my mother throws garbage out, sees the other next to neighbor's house on fire. We're kind of happy because she thinks the house is like the zoo. She has 30 cats, she feeds <laughs> pigeons. She's not normal. She might have an <laughs> elephant in the basement. I don't know what she has on. I, I'll tell you another story. It was a couple of days before circus and I told my parents I hear beeping. So my father chucked, ch- 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 checked. Every fire alarm and carbon monoxide alarm, everything was working. Circus so night, we were seeing the living room. I go to my mom and dad or my Alba and Ima, I go, I hear the beeping. My mother goes, close the eye, could it be dripping? She, she, went under the, she went to the kitchen, opened the door under the kitchen sink and touched the pipe. It fell apart in her hands. I heard water eroding the pipe. Really? But Hashem won't give you a test you can't handle. Hmm. So that's, uh, that's why I need increase because I have to cross streets. I have to, you know what I'm saying? After when I have to walk, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I have made my mistakes even walking. I was walking to Zindo Burma once in ballpark. I ended up in the middle of someone's backyard. <laughs> this guy Leeper works there. It was a big sad. He came to help me. Really? But, you know, yeah. You're like in someone's kitchen and they're like, what are you doing? You're like, do you have any Svarim on Voracious? Yeah. Um, I sometimes walk. Yeah. I've had my stories. Uh, okay. Another question I have for you. So when you drew- like I tell you, can, yeah, can, yeah, yeah. can I tell you again, if you look in your life, you see Yad Hashem. I told you my le- next neighbor thinks the house is a zoo, right? Mm-hmm. So she put these little bricks next to her grass. Hard to explain, but little bricks. She's the only house in the whole block. Why she do that? Because I know when I hit that brick, my house is the next house. Mm. Hashem did it, so she so this way I can find my house. That's so nice. D- do you do you see in your dreams? Yeah, most people I see in my dreams are people in the past. Mm. Like, like mem- memories, I guess. Yeah, like I don't not make fun. I just don't know what you look like. I'm sure you're handsome. I just know what you look like. But I'm just saying. I'm so curious what you think I look like. I think. I'm not sure. I think you've like felt my face before. Not in a weird <laughs> I don't way. Remember. Um, I now have image. You have glasses. I I happen to wearing uh, lenses now, but yes, I do have glasses typically. Um, black hair, brownish hair. Yeah. Now he's very red hair, by the way. Just okay. Just so that, you get a I, for some reason, red hair I cannot make out. I don't know <laughs> really? why. Well, I have a good friend, Mark Spivak. He has red hair. I can't make it out. I can't make out red hair for some reason. I don't know why. That's so interesting. Yeah. I mean, there are there are like many things in, in, you know, the medical world that are advancing with, you know, hopefully transplants and stuff like that. Do you, you know, is that something you're hopeful for that you could one day? Yeah, be I, one I of think, the- I think one day I will see again. I think it's not so far away. I think it's going to be because of, but I, I tell you, Nachi, what I, I tell everyone, let's say they come up with my optic nerve died mm-hmm. during the whole process. Let's say they come up with a, a technique to recharge the optic nerve. Right. It can work for a hundred people, but Hashem says, Levi, you're not seeing again. It will not work for me. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yeah, so you have to go to the doctors. You have to take your medicine. You have to listen to them, of course. 
But we have to realize that Kol Bide Shemaim, everything's in Hashem's hand. It's up to Hashem where this works, not the doctors. I'm sure you agree. Of course. Yes, you have to do shtas. You have to get, if you need operations, you need medicine, you take it. Like the Chafetz Chaim brings down that when you, before you take medicine, he has a little tefillah, you say. You know, you have to, mm -hmm. you know. But I do believe that one day I will be seeing it, and I think it's not so far. I heard a word the other day from Rav Meilch Biederman that he said, Hishtadlis and the results are not, they're not tied together. Yeah. You could do Hishtadlis and the result that you want might not happen, but you just need to do your part. The, yeah. the result, that's, that's, uh, that's up to Hashem. But I, I tell you, one thing I also learned is that you, to dive into Hashem. Hashem wants to give you stuff. You just have to dive into him. He wants you to ask, you know. Mm -hmm. I can tell you all the miraculous stories that you don't even believe, you know. I'll tell you another story. I used to listen to the radio. Now, nothing, it's politics now, but I can't handle it anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's too much. But when I used to come home from Minion, I used to, you know, eat breakfast and, and listen. I have a small radio and listen to it while I'm eating breakfast. The radio fell on my kitchen floor. And my kitchen floor is flat. You'll see what I'm saying. One battery was right near the radio. The other one started rolling under the table. <laughs> I go, Hashem, I know this is a test from you. The minute I said it, the battery rolled back. Hmm. Hashem wants to give us. You just have to ask him for it. So, Levi, I, I know you're very close with a lot of G'daylim. Yeah. Do you, do you have, could you name drop some G'daylim that you're close with? Any Misa's with them? Uh, I was close to Nova Mintz Grabi Zatzal. Mm. I used to eat Shabbos meals by him. I, I'll tell you an incredible story. My friend and I, I forgot who it was with, but we came a half an hour late. He told us, come 12 o'clock for Shabbos lunch. We show 12.30. And we figure, you know, he's eating. Nothing bad. I'm sure you know, Lenga and, and Nachi, like if someone comes late, not so bad if the, if the host start eating. You know, you came late. Right. We come in there, we can't find him. And we go to the other people, the other part of his family, family members, where is he? He went to lie down and goes, I won't stop my lunch until my guests come. Hmm. You know, I once ate by uh, Hamamakil Kotla Shlita, Washiv of Lakewood. He told my friends, I have to walk Levine to the house, not you. He had told my hand, tell me in. Hmm. Or I used to eat by Wanusin Street Finkel's at Sal, Washiva the Mayor and Eric Tiswell. So, you know, unfortunately, you know, he had Parkinson's. Right. So I remember they used to bring the water for him to wash his hands. But whenever we will leave, he get up to escort us out because you have to escort guests out. That's beautiful. You know what I'm saying? There's other stories, but yeah. But you, you, when you go to Eretz Yisrael, you have a, I know you have a sibling there, and you often try to meet up with these gadolim, whether you're eating Shabbos meals by them or yeah. just going to them, schmoozing yeah. with them. What, why, why do you specifically love gadolim so much? Because I miss Torah. They represent Torah in my life. Mm. I miss Taiwa a lot. I really miss it. There's nothing like Taiwa. I think you agree. I, I yeah, I totally agree. I, I, like I tell everyone, the more one learns to live Taiwa, the more happy you're going to be in your life. Something I want to do that we we've never done this before on an episode is, Levi, you're how old are you now? In the forties, right? Okay, you're in the forties and you're single and you're looking for your zivik. We yeah. we have a, a massive audience. But thank you, Hashem. Thank you, Hashem. And and people are listening. And let's let's try what type of what type of wife are you looking Sweet for? Sweet outgoing bas Taiwa. That's it. I got brachas from Sadiqim, a value bach, Finkel Zatzal. He used to be a rabbi in Yeshiva Mir. I forgot the other Sadiq who gave me a bracha that before I get married I'll be seeing again because you know to makadish a woman you have to see how she looks. The game of I'll be seeing, and I think it's coming soon. Yeah, okay. So it, it, I'm, I'm not, I'm really not joking here. If anyone has a shidduch for Levi, please email meaningfulpeoplepodcast at gmail.com and we will forward it towards Levi or Thank his you very much. manager, whoever. But does go, with it. Yeah. But go, just going back to learning to you, I, 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 I used to have meals by Ravasha Ariyali, Shlita, Webby, Yeshiva, and you see he's always smiling because Torah makes you happy. There's nothing like Torah. What type, what, what, for you, like, what type of, do you like Gemara? Do you like Chomish? Uh, I, I guess I, I don't know. I miss everything. All of that. All of the above. I would like by Gemara, Chomish, Halacha, you know. So you, you pass, you pass the bar though, I'm right? I'm like, Baruch I'm financially comfortable. Right. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I pass the bar, sorry. Yes. Do you, did you ever, did you practice law at all? So I worked as a lawyer for close to six, seven years. And then the recession occurred, you know, in 2007 or something like that, and I got laid off. A lot of people got laid off. Right. So I went back to social work school. <laughs> I work now as social work in Yeshiva to Fast Motion Queens. They're, they're really? incredible. Why May and Why Deutsche, they're all incredible to me. Wow. That's so nice. You miss the goldish, they, yeah, they're all very nice. I love that you, you for whatever reason, you're like, okay, I'm just not doing law anymore, and you became a social worker. What, no, but you have to really be. What's next, Dr. Levy? Like, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Being blind, it's very hard finding a job. Right, right. So I, I went to I once one a guy once an interview to clerk by a judge. A fellow clerk came out. He slipped. He goes, "We don't hire blind people." Now you you can sue, but the judge will say, "I never said it." 
So it's not gonna make a difference. Should've gone in with the like recorder. You know, or you know what I'm saying? No, little... but the clerk said not the judge. Ah. Uh-uh. But people, you know, what I'm saying you have to realize it. It, it, it takes long. Like, well, let's say you're a lawyer, a blango. Yeah. One well, might take you half an hour, take me an hour. Right. You know what I'm saying? It, right. I hear that. Um, Levy, we we uh, ask all our guests some fun or interesting questions. If you could spend an hour with any person in history, an hour. You get the, uh, I, I, I can't tell you the. Uh, the, the, I can tell you from like 1970s on, because obviously I like to speak to Moshe Rabbeinu, Avon, Avon, Yitzchak, Yaakov. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay, 70s but, on, that's fine. But like 1970s, well, Moshe fine scenes, that's all. Why, yeah. why him? I don't know why he's my hero, but I guess because he was just, he lived Torah, he learned to, he, his meters were impeccable, they said. His meters were just incredible. He loved of Yidin, love of Jews, and his Torah was tremendous. I think he, well, Yisachar fan said, well, Moshe fine scene finished Shas over 400 times. You know, that's the one that got, yeah, well, Moshe fine scenes, that's all. Livy, were were you were you this in love with Torah and learning before you became blind, or is probably this... not? Not I, I like I love Torah, but not like this. No, you, but you, I, I think you agree, Naki. You don't you don't you miss more when you don't have it. Absence makes you, the heart you, fonder. You, you, you know, know what I'm saying? Yeah. When you can't, when you can't see, you know what I'm saying? I'll tell you one more thing. I forgot to tell you guys. Why I sometimes see is you keep Vavka in front of my eyes. Really? Yeah, because Hashem saying, Livy, don't worry. I am with you. Don't worry. At ta- what at what points in your life do you see that? I'm seeing it a little bit now. I was seeing it before. I don't know. It comes really? Up and yeah. Hashem hmm. is with every yid. Like, that Hashem leave below you. Hashem's with us. There's no reason to be scared. I, uh, I, I have to, okay, I'm going to say it. Although you're blind, you strike me as someone who sees Hashem more than someone who could see. So I can't tell you that. I don't know what I can tell you that. It, it seems like you really have a clear vision of Hashem while all of us are Living in the I darkness, mean, I, right I, away. I don't know, but I tell you, it's so important to realize he's with us and to dive in. Can I ask you a question? Sure, yeah. Can you explain to me how the Yidden are around? Because all the even before the Holocaust, Crusades, Inquisition, pogroms, it's talking about based on Migdash Mitzrayim. Can you explain to me how we're around? There's no explanation. So the children, well, Yaakov Emden said the only reason around because Hashem's in this world to prove as long as the Jewish people are around, that's the greatest proof Hashem's in this world. I love that. If, if someone like, could you explain to someone who's not blind what it, what it feels, what it means to be blind, what what you? Uh, I don't explain it. I mean, all I can say is that you know the struggles. Um, what do you What do you wish people? What do you wish people did better for, uh, so for I, blind I, people? Most Most people don't do this, but I don't like it when people are overprotective of me. Oh mm-hmm. yeah. I was once at someone's house, <coughs> and my my friend, I was and and the person, not the person, that his, maybe his father, was being protective of me. Going, watch this, watch this, and I couldn't handle the father anymore. So I asked him where the bathroom was, and I went in the bathtub screaming, "Help me, help me!" <laughs> he almost had a heart attack, the father. But yeah, but I, I don't like when people are overprotective. I know you're going to find find this crazy. I'd rather fall down steps or even hit my head against the wall than the overprotection. Overprotection drives you up. You know what I'm saying? Well, because it, you feel like it takes away your freedom in you a way. You feel belittled. You feel right. like you know. You, you just feel like very belittled. You just want to be treated like anybody else. Yeah, like a normal adult. Yes, there are times I need help more than someone who can see. I agree. But I'm saying, you know, if someone's really overprotective. Listen, right? sometimes, uh, sometimes someone who can't see needs help more than you. Like, you know, if I was going for my LSATs, I'm sure I would need more help than you. <laughs> yeah, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Levy, something that's the elephant in the room. We didn't mention this. We got to bring it up though. What? Your name's Levy. Is it Levy? Like what? what, what? Levy, L-A-V-I. What? My mother's Israeli. Lamed Vez Yudal. Ki Levi mi kamenu. I'll tell you a funny story. When I was learning in Eretz Yisrael, a friend said Levi must be short for Leviticus. <laughs> <laughs> so some guy once called my house many years ago, can I please speak to Leviticus? <laughs> my father goes, I'm sorry, you just took an exodus. <laughs> But I've been calling it called Label, Lavi. I've been even, my last name, Greenspan, called Greenspoon, Yellowspoon, <laughs> Greenspax. You name it, I've been named that. So, Levy Greenspax. Um, no, Levy Greenspan. <laughs> Sorry, Levy Greenspan. Levy, yeah. you, you should live at May of Esther. And Amen, can you at son? Mirza Shem, but, well, you know, when that time does come, what do you want to be remembered for? That I made I, I made the Jewish community better than it was. I helped out Yidin. You definitely do. I want to know they helped out Yidin. I made someone smile. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I made someone more happy in life. It's it, I, 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 help, I, I help people. You know what I'm saying? I want everyone to meet you because I I I I have the success of knowing you personally, and you're a very fun person. Whether you're playing pranks on people or you're just the yeah, the, like, the jokester well, in the room or like, just can spelling I tell, the Torah. Can, can I tell a joke you played on me once? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Nachi, oh, y- oh Yaakov Langer said to me, "I'll pick you up from Zindel Berman and Ballpark." Oh gosh. So I get in the car. 
And I go, where's your brother? Because his brother, Ellie, was supposed to pick me up. Yaakov goes, I'm sorry, Ellie couldn't come today. Okay? So we start driving. Then suddenly I feel a hand in the back seat touching me. It was Ellie laying on the back. <laughs> it was by the main well, hey, hey, you're, you're, you're ousting me, right? You're going to lose <laughs> tons of subscribers now. No, That's but by the time Yaakov Langer, Ellie Langer, the all, and his brother Yitzi, they're all and incredible. And there's Avi Langer also. Avi Langer. But, but Avi all, needs to get more involved. Avi should take you around Yeah, more. but they're all incredible people. His father, yeah, all, his mother, father, yeah. Ellie, Yaakov Langer's father, they're all incredible people. Thank you, Ashkai. Yaakov, can I tell you about your father, Yaakov, quickly? Sure. When I want to find places in the bungalow for something, he'd always call, call people every shop. That's how I got to know Shimon Lefkowitz. Because mm. Yaakov Ling, your father made the shit up. Really? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, you got in touch, I think, with Yankee Woodman from Ballpark. We got in touch with so you, you also, you're always, I mean, obviously with COVID, okay, but when we're after COVID, you're always looking to go to communities for Shabbos or go around. Yeah. You're always looking. So anyone listening, if you're, if you're, yeah. Wanting to have Levi again, email meaningful but people I, I, podcast. I, I, yeah, but I'll tell you, you ain't got, Baksham have a lot of houses. I have incredible people. Right. I know, but you know what? Every here and there, you give me a call. You're like, Langer, okay, I yeah, need but, a place for Shabbos yeah, in okay, Brockway. But, but can I tell you, I can go to Shimon Lefkowitz every Shabbos. Yeah. Um, I can say by Shimon Lefkowitz the whole, for 10 years, he wouldn't say a word to me. He's an incredible tzaddik, Shimon Lefkowitz. And his wife, who goes Khan, you know? Right. His wife and his whole family. Wow. Wow. So, Levi, what's the worst advice you've ever gotten? I don't remember. I don't remember. I can't tell you. I don't remember. Okay. What's, the, what's the best advice you've ever gotten? I guess to appreciate what I do have. You remember? I guess not to give I don't remember. I don't. I just don't remember. You know, it's often I don't take notes. Obviously, because I'm blind, I don't take notes. Right. Take like mental notes. But I, but I tell you this, Nachi. What I also do is before I go to sleep, mainly on Shabbos, but now every, every sorry every day. I try to think of one or two or three good things that happened that day, and I go, Hashem, I thank you for A. Hashem, I thank you for B. And Hashem, I thank you for C. It taught me a lot to say thank you to Hashem. You know, we, you, can, you can complain and complain to Hashem, but you have to say thank you to Him, what He's given you. Right. You know, I tell, I'll tell you one thing I do miss a lot. I miss seeing the beautiful Shabbos candles. Mm. You know, I miss those a lot. Of course, I miss Tari when I, my parents and my Rebbe, but and, and my other friend, you know, but I miss, I miss seeing the beautiful Shabbos candles. It's not, you know, it gives like serenity to Shabbos. I'm sure you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, uh, there's there's 613 mitzvahs aside mm. for the mitzvah of Talmud Torah, learning Torah. Yeah. Which which mitzvah do you gravitate towards the most? Besides Torah. Besides Torah. Probably Shabbos. For some reason, Shabbos. I I take Shabbos early and it late. I I, I mean, Shab I just love Shabbos. I do just, you do you do you think you have a, a better I, appreciation for Shabbos because you can't see? So all of a sudden, Shabbos really is a lot of people just shutting down and they can't be elsewhere. They got to be together. There's there's that family. I don't know aspect. why. I don't know why. And also davening. I take longer shemanesries than ever before. But that's also because I'm you know I'm asking Hashem all, all my requests. Right. You know what I'm saying. You know. But yeah, I don't know why in Shabbos. I also guess because. I can find more people to learn Torah with me and Shabbos. I don't. I don't know. I can't tell you because obviously Jews are learning Torah all week. There's tons of Jew, tons of th millions of Jews are learning Torah all week. That's not necessarily true. Jews will learn Torah all week. Millions of them. So I don't know. But Shabbos, I just love Shabbos. What's the What's the most or of the most inspiring stories that you've ever heard? Um, I have to stop him right now. Um, there was one where Moshe Feinstein's at Sal. Again, I, I, again, you have to realize he's my hero. But um, this guy, this there was a there was a hospital near near Lower East Side. I forgot what it's called Bet is Bet Yisrael or Bet Kel. I don't know what it's called. Mm -hmm. But a doctor. It was Friday night, and a doctor told uh, told this from Jew that you know, his wife was about to give birth and told the from Jew that um, that he's not sure, the doctor's not sure if the wife's going to make it or even the baby's going to make it. And the father did not know what whether it was a, a boy or girl. So the father slept in the rain to where Moshe Feinstein's at Zal, you know, to get a bracha from him. When Moshe kept saying, yeah, I make Kiddush, you know, come in, make Kiddush, Chala, it's Shabbos night. And, and the guy goes, I can't, I'm worried about my wife and kid. So when Moshe Feinstein went to the back to Davin and he came back to the guy, he goes, don't worry your wife and your baby boy will be okay. And it was a baby boy. Hmm. But what showed me the most is how much he cared about the, how much he cared about the Yid. Please come in, let me give you Kiddush, Chala, let me give you food for Shabbos. I mean, there's other stories that inspire me. There's a Rebbe in, in Tefes Moshe, Rabbi Unger, he lives up in Muncie. He told me again, same thing with his mother. She had MS, multiple sclerosis. And the doctor said to her, she's also expecting kid number six or seven, and said to her, said to him, the doctor said, you have to, you have to have an abortion because otherwise the mother's going to die. 
So they went to Ibik Zatzal. Ibik was a big post in Brooklyn. Ibik said, yeah, she'd have an abortion, but he asked where Moshe Feinstein Zatzal. So Ayungu's father was online, you know, because don't forget when Moshe Feinstein Zatzal was alive, he was a post like Ador. So tons of people asking questions. And when Ayungu's father came, when Moshe Feinstein Zatzal said, no abortion. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they're wheeling in the mother and, and, you know, she was having, you know, a C-section and doctor said, you sure? He goes, yeah. The mother came out safely and the baby came out safely. The doctor was so impressed, they called him Little Moses because of what Moshe Feinstein was all until her breasts. <laughs> but uh, what, what touched me is what Moshe Feinstein called the mother uh, within that year, see how she's doing, you know. Then my youngest father brought the boy when he was three years old to Moshe. And, 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 the, and, the, and the father goes to Moshe, those little kid give Moshe a kiss. Well, Moshe gave the little kid a kiss. You know, it just showed me, you know, yeah. how important it is to love Yidin. It taught me a lot that you have to love Yidin and try to want to help them. Besides learning Torah, of course, and Moshe finds that's how it stood for Torah mitzvahs, obviously. Well, super Levi Greenspan, thank you for but, sitting. But, but, oh, but okay. just I tell everyone, you have to appreciate what you do have. Like, I just leave you, can I just leave off on the quick story? Sure. I remember when I was in Shiva and I would saw this guy, I think his name was Toma Isaac, if I remember correctly. He said, you can't cry over spilled milk, but more, even more that, if, you, if your cup is even filled with a half a cup of milk, but look at that, you still have a half a cup of milk. You can't cry what you don't have. You have to look what you do have. Mm. Thank Amen. you so much. Thank Olivia. you. I wish everyone had slacha and simcha in their life. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Meaningful People podcast. And we have a little bit of an interesting request. Yeah. So we mentioned in this in this episode, well, two things I want to get straight. First of all, we had Levi. He's been patiently waiting and like so many other people, and we appreciate it. Just to give you context, we had Levi. I think I said on the episode that, hey, this is our first time we're asking about a shidduch for our guest. And then a few weeks later, we had... Amari on the mm. podcast and of course okay the Amari one it was very hyped up and we had to release it then we shot this like two three months ago yes and you'll hear other episodes are way back so thank you Levi for waiting but also technically Levi was the first one that we're really trying um, to find a shidduch as you could hear he's a one of a kind wonderful wonderful yid I wouldn't say human being but he, if he, you he, have any shidduch ideas for Levi Greenspan feel free to email us at meaningfulpeoplepodcast at gmail.com Let's get him married. Yeah, yeah. Great Let's guy. do it. Great guy. And um, if you are only hearing this episode for the first time, or maybe you heard of three other episodes, go check out. We have so many incredible episodes. And it's we look at the numbers over here and there. Not too much. We don't want to obsess over it. But it's nice to see like older episodes, uh, which are timeless, people listening to. So, yeah. They're oldies but goodies. Go check them out and make sure to leave a review. They're not even so old. They're, they're like a year ago. Like the conversation is... In 2021, that's old. I really think that I, I we set these up that if someone listens to this in 2038, it will be just as relevant. Okay, maybe it'll be a drop references outdated, but like the, the, the gems coming out of these meaningful people are And great. if you're listening to this in 2038... I hope everything's good. Yeah. Right, we're, yeah. We're we're like, tell us some... about Mashiach and yeah. how that went. All right. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. Ciao. Ciao.